Well, when you're having fun with friends and you're talking and talking and talking, it ends up becoming a two-episode show. So welcome to part two of our interview with Scott Braun and Eric Kratz of Foul Territory. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And John and I, thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and now on Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by Rocket Money. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Happy Saturday to you, and thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day, including Saturday. You've got hey, the hey. Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, we're continuing our conversation with Scott Braun and Eric Kratz of Foul Territory. Of course, you know Scott from his time on MLB Network as a play-by-play guy and an analyst. And then Eric Kratz, a big leaguer who was part of that 2014 Royals team that broke our hearts in the Boom. playoffs. Uh, <laughs> but we had an incredible conversation. They had some really great things to say about our Halos, things that they'd like to see. They asked us some questions. So let's get into that conversation. Part two right now. Do, playing for an owner like Artie, I know that you know you were there for just a bit, but what, having an owner like that, that maybe is hands-on, but puts a lot of boundaries and rules, like what is it like to be a player for an owner like that? Does that bother them? Do, are they aware of it? I'm trying to think of different owners that I've played for that were kind of like two hands on and baseball. It's rare. Like you hear about like Jerry Jones, you hear about, you know, Mm -hmm. other sports. Yeah, it is. It hundred percent is. Yeah. That's the problem. And, and, and and, Hey, there's an owner that's, that's very, very involved in the same division, Jim Crane, but he clearly knows what he's doing to an extent. And uh, you know, I don't want to open up like, oh, we're gonna, we don't need to talk about 2017 or whatever. But like, <laughs> let's look. That's at more the day trauma. Day. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want drama? Last year, we there was a general manager who knew he was gone. Everyone knew there was a ton of drama behind the scenes, and they still won a World Series. Right. So, yeah, I'm looking at that. Like, if we were in existence for foul territory last year, we would have been all over that story. It's an unprecedented story. And then he gets essentially canned right after the season offered like a, a BS deal. So yeah. to me, that's nuts. I, I had a question for you guys too, that that's popped up in my head because I'm thinking back to 2017 and I know it's, I talked about it at the beginning, but that tweet aged incredibly well. <laughs> that they wasted, they're wasting away Mike Trout's prime years. And it, it was completely accurate. And that is six years ago before mm-hmm. the 2017 season started. And it wasn't, and it was based off. Yes. Hearing that quote, from Artie, which wasn't a public quote behind the scenes from people that work with him. But also I was looking at the way that the team was handling, say their farm system. And I'm like, this is an absolute train wreck. I don't see Mm -hmm. anything going in the right direction here. And if an owner's just closing his eyes and saying, I'll have dinner with this agent and let's sign him. I'm like, this is going to be really bad for a long time. And I'm like, also trout is now one of the best players ever. And is going to be, you could see it, right? Yeah. Right. So I call that out. And then now, yeah, I like Perry. I like, I like the move there. That's a much better guy to put in place. He's, he's still going to have limitations, though. He's yes. not right. be able to do exactly what he wants to do. So my question for you guys, for example, is because I, I hosted the draft for years, for, yeah. um, especially day two and day three, for, since I can remember. So when the year that you pick all pitching, in, how are those pitchers doing? Like, how are we feeling right now about the farm system and, and Perry hasn't had enough time, but just in general, we know you, you still have to have really good homegrown talent. And of course we look at what the Dodgers have done for years. Yes. They, they obviously spend their ownership does is not a helicopter owner. Yes. Yeah. And they do an incredible job of drafting and developing. That's been an enormous issue for the angels over the past 10 years. How do you guys feel about where they're at as a farm system and where they're at with their pitching And I know about, obviously, two very good relievers in the system who will be helping the team this year. Yeah, it's it's been a roller coaster because if you go back to 2012, you have, 
you know, Jerry DePoto comes in as the GM. You still got Mike Sosha as your manager. Then DePoto's out. They bring in Billy Epler. Then uh, Sosha's gone. And then they have in Brad Osmus and then Joe Madden. And then now Epler's gone and now it's Perry Manassian. So nobody has been here long enough to even establish any sort of like train of thought when it comes to a minor league philosophy. And in that time, like you said, it's it, the last 10 years have been a train wreck. And with Perry Manassian coming in, it finally feels like there's some sort of game plan, but this game plan should have happened 10, 12 years ago, rather than, you know, just two years ago with Perry Manassian coming in. Now, having said that, the, it seems like the draft picks that he's got have, have, done really well and they're stashing all those guys in double a and and i think they were mike were they the first minor league team in the angel system to get to the playoffs in a decade or so yeah, like yeah. it's kind of like it, yep. it's reflective of it's mm-hmm. reflective of who's been here but you think about guys like sam bachman and chase silseth who you know were drafted to be starters but mike and i kind of feel like they're going the Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff route where you bring them up, you give them some time in the bullpen, you let them pitch in some high leverage kind of situations and you get them used to the bigs. Plus they got that dumb sticky tack ball down in the Southern league where the trash pandas are. So nobody has a good read on, on how anybody's doing down right. there. It's like this guy lost all control. Well, it's because he's throwing that dumb ball that Manfred put in down there. Um, so all that to say, I, I we, we're hopeful that they're going that route with those starters. And then, you know, you see somebody like Zach Neto who preseason, we were like, yeah, he'll be great. Maybe next year, the year after that. And now he's here now. And part of it is like, it's, it's falling backwards into something great because, because of the limitations of, of Artie Marino who went on the record and said that he wanted to get Trey Turner and Perry Manassi and had to say, well, we can get Trey Turner, but Artie, we also have to spend money here and here and here and here. So fortunately, I mean, all of us would have loved to have Trey Turner, but we knew that it would have come at the cost of having a backup third baseman when Rendon inevitably gets hurt. And all of that to say, I think they accidentally found something great in Zach Neto. The fact that he's come up and crushed it so far uh, is is not by virtue of anything that Artie Marino did well. It, it's It's that Perry drafted well and then went, well, I really like this kid. Let's give him a shot. So um, it, it's great that he's having such success. And and so this is the first time, I think, in a long time that we've felt pretty good about the the minor leagues. And then you go back to some of like Epler's picks and you see Taylor Ward just now, you know, finding his stride. He really found it last year. He got hurt. We're, he's struggling to come out of the gate this year. And then you think about like Joe Adele, who has who came up way early 20 years old because there was only one place to actually play real games in 2020 and that was in the pigs and so they rushed him up to give him some playing time but he's bounced back and forth and and they've kind of taken the job out of his hands and then gave it to him and then took it away again now he's in triple a and he's crushing it and mike and i are of the opinion that he needs a full year down there to just get his confidence back and like be a dude again um, so there, there is a lot of hope. And I think, especially in the pitching department, which the, everybody knows the angels have always needed pitching, pitching, pitching. So as angel fans who are, you know, doing our best to stay on top of these things, it feels like we've got a good thing going, um, uh, you know, in the next few years, especially with these young guys coming up. So <laughs> I'm going to do a comparison here for why we're on the show and all friends now. And obviously you guys are welcome. We'll definitely have, have you guys back. Oh, we'd love that. Us. We- need to line that up because we have, we're lining up guests. We're doing the daily hustle like you guys every day for, for covering all 30 teams. But love it. you said, hey, we all would have loved to have Trey Turner. Now, what we just went through is not too different from Angels fans on Twitter, the angry ones, sending you screenshots of Trey Turner's start to the season. Yes, and exactly. We, <laughs> we don't want that money. We we're so lucky. We resources that way. It's a $300 million garbage player look at his 2023 stats because i'm getting the same screenshots and not like i'm the world's biggest tim anderson fan but it's the same concept he's actually way cheaper and and he's 29 tim right (laughs) but but who wouldn't want trey turner even right Right. now if i could gift you trey turner you would take him right yes (laughs) for 300 million dollars even i would take him on this team especially right now because i need to win right now right 
if, if we want to yeah. say, hey, Trey gets short because Neto's the young guy and he can play second right now and we'll move him back another time or we freaking love the glove so much that we'll put Trey at second because he's played that before. This is the same reason why we've become friends. That's that right. Off to a slow start. I mean, Trey's been booing himself. So fans right. that are watching like <laughs> a couple months of baseball and judging a player's entire career off of that are – yeah directing their anger and energy in the wrong direction. Well, I mean, what has happened with the Angels starting the season, like you look at April, for example, they they struggled. They were over 500, 15 and, and, and 13, so, mm-hmm. which was great, a great start. But there were games where they lost, they should have won. And Angels Twitter, some on Angels Twitter, went nuts. Like, Otani's gone, panic mode, hit the button, right? We have a, a, a great listener, a great viewer. His name is Mark, and we've nicknamed him Miserable Mark because – <laughs> anytime the angels do anything good, he won't say anything, but anytime the angels do anything bad, he's the first to make a comment about it. And <laughs> it was April. It was April. Right. And so that's, that's the thing that we have really tried to stress on locked on angels is that we, we have to, we have to play 162. We have to see where this goes. Let's see where we're at at the all-star break. Let's see where we're at at the trade deadline at the and end then of the we month. Can, <laughs> exactly. And yeah, then exactly. we can make some decisions about where we're at and, and what decisions need to be made. And if we need to hit the panic button or not. Yes. Be, it, one of our favorite phrases that has emerged on, on our show on foul territory is pump the brakes. Right. Mm, yeah. We we've been in the game for a while. I mean, me obviously working in it and being in media and being at ballparks I've been thousands of flights in my life just hanging at ballparks. So you get a different look and a different perspective. And also sometimes, right, if there, there are a lot of fans that only care about their own team. You're living and dying off every pitch. We don't do that. Or at least I don't do that. So the perfect example this year, Kratzy can back me up. The Pittsburgh Pirates had a nice start to the season. They're not good yet. Yeah. They're not a playoff team at all. This is a rebuilding franchise and they're still building. So on our show, I said that, and some fans were upset about it. And very quickly, it's changed. I'm also, I'm not going to like go up here and be like, I'm always right. Right, Sometimes you're not going to gloat, yeah. Last year, the Phillies, I'm, I'm watching them. I'm like, this team, wow, super disappointing. Their defense is not good. I'm a big defense guy, which I still think for the Angels, okay defense. Not yeah. great, but okay defense. <laughs> so You're learning. <laughs> right? For me, I was looking at the Phillies last year like, what? I, I don't see it. They made a lot of moves and the team turned around and they're a super streaky team even this season. So the pump the brakes is important, especially if you're following the team on a daily basis because you can't live and die off every pitch, every game. Things change. It's a long season. So you need to relax in my mind. So in in my opinion, Kratzy, the Angels right now are about an average team in the league and a lot of their numbers in terms of an offense, in terms of pitching – Um, in terms of defense, are pretty mediocre. So I think you need to do a lot more to be a World Series team, in my mind. So, And the problem is the rest of the AL has a lot of really strong ball clubs. Lockdown Angels is brought to you by Bird Dogs. They're a clothing company that's all about your comfort. And Mike and I can attest to that because we recently got two pairs of shorts from Bird Dogs. And man, these are the most comfortable shorts I think I've ever owned I was walking around in them like a big shot yesterday. My wife was telling me to knock it off. Uh, We look good and we feel good wearing bird dogs. In fact, the fabric is stretchy, so it fits you instead of you trying to make it fit. And as somebody who knows all too well about that, these are very comfortable shorts and they certainly do fit me. Bird dogs gives you the freedom to wear a pair of shorts or pants on the golf course, maybe to a meeting maybe on a date or hanging out with friends. They're casual, they're comfy, and they make you look good. So if you want to be casual, comfy, and look good like Mike and I, and you know that you need to get yourself a pair of Bird Dogs shorts and pants, go to birddogs.com slash MLB and use the promo code LOCKEDONMLB because when you do, our friends at Bird Dogs are going to throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. And man, I love drinking my iced coffee out of that tumbler every single morning. So once again, that's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Use our promo code locked on MLB. Look good, feel good. Get yourself a pair of pants and shorts today 
from Bird Dogs. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day, including Saturday. Locked hey. On Everydayers, we're going to recap this series against the Marlins on Monday, so join us then. Remember that the Angels play the Marlins at 7.07 tonight, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Piggyback off what Scott said. I was on the radio for the Phillies last year. Mm-hmm. So I saw I saw what they had in April when I did the, when I did games and I saw how that team the pieces that they put together they let the players play they put the pieces together they picked up nobody knows how big of a pickup Brandon Marsh is in center field when you have Odubel Herrera running <laughs> around center field in a really small ballpark now you yeah. have a guy who has always run the ball down then right. they picked up Edmundo Sosa getting three innings out of Edmundo Sosa because you're spelling a Bryson Stott at shortstop you're pushing him over because Edmundo Sosa is both those guys brought in a single war each just because of their defense mm-hmm. so my question and then you saw where the Phillies ended up going my question for you guys what do the Angels need? You guys are there. Every, your boots on the ground, Angels fans. What do they need? In, Extensive wish list. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, go over, right? You want yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I, want, I want the whole thing. Don't, I love don't it. Even hold back. Don't hold back because I, it can happen. I can give you examples of trades and easy, like easy people around the league that they can plug in there. I, I think they need another starter. I'd love to see him try to get Mitch Keller from the Pirates. That's my wish list. What do you yeah. What do you think, Mike? No, yeah, I, I, wait, Kratzy, what's wrong? You can't get Mitch Keller from the Pirates. That yeah, he's not. not. They're not trading him, right? They're gonna hold. They're gonna hold on to <laughs> you that. said whatever I wanted. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, what position? What position sure. do you want? You want a it's starter? That's fine. Starter. Mitch Keller, you cannot have it. Won't happen. Because the pirates hold on to toys like that, yeah, that are cheap, like a two-year-old, like yeah. <laughs> and he he's got two more years one. of arbitration after this one too. I so. all of this. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I I think that we need a starter, okay. uh, and I think that we need, I would say, at least one, maybe two bullpen pieces. And Ooh, Chapman's and, a great choice too. And I think Chapman I think. would be a great choice. Yeah. Your comment about we don't have a major league uh, catcher. Um, is an interesting comment because um, we we're not fans of Thais and now Matty Thais is playing a little bit better. Um, I've always been a fan of Chad Wallach, but I know that he's been up and down. And so I agree with you. And so I think that there might be some wisdom in going and getting somebody. I'm a fan of Edgar Caro. He's in their trip. He's in their double a, but he doesn't have the major league catching ability yet. He's not solid behind the plate. I wouldn't before before you go any farther. I didn't say not a major league catcher. I said a playoff catcher. That's it. Right, yes. right, right, right. Like yeah. A playoff catcher is either somebody is a you know Chad Wallach in maybe four years. Yeah. You know he was on he was on the Marlins team that that kind of made that push. You need that catcher at that position because the catcher's not going to play every single day. You're not getting JT Romuto. Yeah. You're not getting. <laughs> what if I gave you? What if I gave you? Salvador Perez for Joe Adele. Mm. I take Ooh. it. I take it. I take it in a heartbeat. But you got to pick up his salary. A Who cares? Catcher. That's Who up cares? to Artie. They're rich. <laughs> yeah. They're rich. You need to get everyone. Yeah. Yes. It's like the Angels should be taking advantage of getting players that might be in their mind over, like, like overpaid. That, yeah. that to me is the part. That's the part that triggers me on on Angels fan base Twitter is worrying about money. Stop yeah, we never. About money. Yeah. It's not yeah. your money, and your owner's a billionaire. Look yeah, up. right. It I'll matter. show up to the games and pay for more tickets if they end up making some of these moves. I love what's happening in San Diego. I mean, it was a Tuesday night, and they're what six games under five hundred, and they had like forty thousand people there. Yeah, and so yeah. that's fantastic, and that's what I would love to see happen in Anaheim because when that place is full, that place is rocking, and it's a really fun place to play. It's a really fun place to watch baseball. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The, the Braves are a great story too. That that place is packed. They've done an incredible job, and that's why I really liked Perry. Of course, because you're coming from that brain trust. Yeah. Like, look at when they won the World Series, and they were like, "We need outfield help." What did they do? They got four. Because yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe two of these guys work out, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the kind of mindset that that a team and a fan base should be having. So, totally same page. 
and and this is i mean i don't have time i Kratzy knows I'm, I don't have time because we're we got a new business going here to answer every single Angels fan and most of them then just want to like go in a weird direction. So <laughs> like, I'm personal shots like I'm a pretty nice guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, starting pitching relievers and for me more offense. I mean, I know that they did a much better job of infield depth this offseason. But to me, I would I would definitely still be looking for more because yeah. it is still in my mind a bit top heavy on the offensive side. And also even for our, our special guy, Neto, he is a rookie. He was playing college ball last year. If he had a second half slump, say, you wouldn't be surprised. He's never played a long season like this. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to prepare yourselves for that in case that does happen. Now that doesn't mean he's going to be sent down and even the glove should let him play up for the rest totally, of his career. Totally. But you can't expect necessarily that after the one for 12 start, and then he's been really good that that could fall. And that doesn't mean he's a bad player too. And that's okay. I'm not going to be tweeting at every angels fan saying, <laughs> look, he's slumping right now. But yeah. they, 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 if they're going to, but you could, <laughs> but, you, but if you did, <laughs> I won't, I, I save, I save myself up for six years for Victor Rojas. To, yeah, to there you go. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Victor, you worked for the team. So you can't say things. And then ended up splitting with them anyway. And I don't know him personally, but I'm just like, dude, you're going after how much I'm watching your team because I made a comment. So yeah, I'm not bitter about it, but I'll wait six years to, to come back. This is the first time <laughs> I'm talking about it. So I, 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 one, one more quick story. I was actually called into the principal's office by my old boss during that time period. Cause I think I replied like something very mild mannered, like, yeah, I actually do watch their games all the time. I love trout or something. And he brought me in because, and this was a boss who was, was fired later on because he was way too uptight and has no idea how content works <laughs> and and he was sat me down and was like basically telling me that i should chill on social media and i did basically for a long period after that because i was just trying to do my job and i was like all right I, i'll talk on the air or, or when you're calling games you're not you know mr opinion anyway you're all right game. but he had a conversation with me just about that situation alone i'm like I, and I wasn't like going after him, just like, but you're coming after me because the dude attacked me because I was just saying what I thought about a ball club. I'm like, he's mm. like, don't get into it with other teams and other broadcasters, whatever. So he's like, you need to just chill on social media. So this, this must have been the days before like Wendy's changed what how a company could operate on Twitter because <laughs> I feel like they're the ones. 2017. That, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't long ago, but now yeah. I feel liberated because I can, I can say whatever I want. And generally I'm, I'm more on the, on the fan and the player side. And I, I think in our sport, sometimes half the owners will try and warp minds of fans that like you can't afford something or, you know, you should be going after players. Like it's the same thing during the CBA, right? When we had the lockout, yep. you got yeah. fans going, this is such BS. Players are overpaid. I'm like, by billionaires. <laughs> Crap, remember the first week of our show, a Brewers fan, because we, we have every Brewer on, um, and we have our own, like, there's a specific Brewer show called Brew Crew Territory. And a Brewers fan kept attacking me on Twitter, saying, like, our ownership, it, like, doesn't have money. We're not that rich. Remember that, Kratzy? The, the oh, fan right. coming after us. And we're like, Sell the team <laughs> if that's the problem. And that <laughs> right. way going after, I mean, the Brewers have done a nice job. They've been a competitive team um, for a while now. But I'm like, you're, why are you defending an owner if we want the team to do a little bit more? I'm like, any owner at any time, and we've seen this all over the place, right? From Cardinals ownership, Reds ownership last year, absolutely roasted, Orioles ownership. If you have a problem and you don't think the business is going well or whatever, if you put the team up for sale, someone will buy it in a heartbeat mm -hmm. yeah. for – billions of dollars there's not yeah, one me. team worth under a billion dollars so i just think sometimes we have to think about that because we're in a sport that doesn't have a salary cap yeah so that's where we should put pressure on the people that run these things to treat them like toys and not like corporations lockdown angels is brought to you by rocket money over 80 percent of people have subscriptions that they forgot about and chances are you might be one of them, like the Stars app that you subscribe to just so you could watch that one show. Or maybe you had a free gaming trial that you never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. Just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses. So that way you can easily track your budget in real time and get alerted 
if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person $720 a year. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Again, visit rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. So when it comes to foul territory, obviously I want to give you guys a good plug here. It's Monday through Friday, YouTube, Twitch. You guys are on podcast platforms. You've got, obviously... Eric Kratz, you've got Todd Frazier, Adam Jones, you've got <clears throat> AJ <clears throat> Prasinski. <and> <laughs> 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 uh, but no, you guys have a really great thing going there. Um, just really quick before we let you go, and, and you've gotten into it, some of it already, but but just what inspired this whole concept of foul territory to come together? So for us as a group, there are conversations within the sport for years now about baseball needing to catch up to basketball and football in terms of transparency, open, Mm. authentic conversations, highlighting our awesome players, not just for what they're doing on the field, but their personalities. Mm -hmm. Players are hilarious. And if you're in a big league clubhouse, which obviously Kratzy was in for two decades and all of our other guys as well, I'm the outsider just as say a reporter, broadcaster, but I'm in there all the time. It's the best conversations and we're playing, they're playing a sport every single day. So there's drama, and we want to highlight the players and bring them on. And most of them, if, if you had said podcasts in the past, they're so busy that they think podcast hour and a half. I don't have mm-hmm. time. I got a game every day. We bring these guys on live for 15 minutes. They're friends with all of these player hosts that we have. And you are getting answers and conversations that I've never heard. And I've been in baseball broadcasting for a while now. I might look like yeah. I'm 12, but I'm in my mid thirties. So it's been awesome. We, we just started this at the beginning of the season and the response has been really cool. Mostly from fans being like, never heard. So, in, you know, this player talked like that before Zach Gallen telling us why he thinks he got traded from the Cardinals, the team that he was a lifelong fan of because they wanted him to show up to some random mini camp after he was totally toast from a season and he wasn't mm. doing exactly what they wanted. So they, they made him available in a deal, which obviously Cardinals fans are pretty upset about. Those kind of stories are sick, and they're untold. Mm. So, and we hear them behind the scenes. So, Kratzy, I've said enough, but getting guys like you together to actually say whatever you want and bring on your friends and talk about what you would talk about in the clubhouse, for me, is a dream. Like, I was looking for that on, a, on an all-encompassing level. Like, you guys yeah. are doing an amazing job covering the team on a daily basis, but I'm like – I want to hear from the players yeah. want, and, and them going on MLB or ESPN or any of these spots. It's no offense to them, but they bring them on for five minutes and they go, Hey, how's your sling? Like we're, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. And when I was, you know, brought into this loop of, you know, Scott and Mark, the other executive producer, like I, you know, I was coming to the end of my career. I was at the end, I quit and I was done playing. I wanted to be able to, well, two things that really intrigued me about this show. I wanted to be able to still make an impact in baseball, but Mm. I wanted to be home. I wanted to have the flexibility of being able to see my kids, see my 16 and 14 and 10 year old kids grow up that I didn't get to see while I was playing. I mean, they Mm -hmm. were there, but you know, it was on one of our episodes. We talk about how much like as a player, you're just kind of, you're not that awesome as a dad. Mm-hmm. You, know? you have an awesome job, but you're not that awesome. So have an impact on the game without going in and coaching. And this is the greatest platform for baseball because other sports, they allow the players to be seen. They allow the players' personalities to be seen. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to go and like – you're going to like Jose Altuve because he's not on your team. It just means there is a cross-section of – all of our society that can make a connection with certain players. And this platform allows people to make those connections. And the other part that's cool about this show, I get to hang out with my buddies. Like I get to, I get yeah. to call them and interact with them. And ultimately all of this, my hope when I'm done in this show, if it's in a year, if it's in 20 years, that the whole game of baseball is brought up. Because ESPN and MLB Network, ESPN barely ever covers baseball anymore. But <laughs> and, you know they want to sell just the superstars. Yeah, just the superstars. There's 89 percent of the rest of the league out there that can also be sold. And if all those guys, you know, you start seeing these personalities, 
you see a personality of Brandon Woodruff. This guy is an epic. He was just on today, so that's who I'm thinking of. He's an epic storyteller. Like when we get Max Stassi on, like the stories that he and I have connections wise and what he's into is awesome. Logan Ohapi, mm-hmm. his first ever, his first ever at bat at Yankee Stadium was during COVID. Like when Logan comes on at some point, I was catching and I made him laugh because of something <laughs> I said. Like all that stuff gives you guys as diehard everyday fans of the angels, a glimpse into that player for that 20 minutes that we have them on. And, but MLB network doesn't want to do that. I did a couple of MLB network things. I never did anything with ESPN, but it's like, Hey, we want you to break this down. You have three minutes and 39 seconds go. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I could talk about how the dude like just had a night game and he's playing in a day game. And it's probably why he's slow going to his right here in this situation. Or, you know what I mean? Like there's so much to, and we don't have a time limit, but we also don't have that player's personality. This show allows that personality. Like, Hey, you just had a kid, Max Muncie, and you're sick. We were talking about that the other day on the show. Yeah. Like, and he got yeah. from the game, you know? Yeah. And- and and we're like, yo, let's air it out. What happened? And you yeah. take that time, and then that gets picked up a lot. So yeah, you can see, I mean, Ken Rosenthal is super unfiltered. He's been my favorite insider in the game for a long yeah. time, and he finally feels like he's got that. He's got had the writing platform at the Athletic, but now he feels like he can come on and and do this. Two other quick examples. I know we're we're, we're gushing about what we like to do now as a job every day because we're putting a lot into it. That's is, awesome. For example, Lance Lynn. Okay, the White Sox, Angels fans, you you have a fan base that you should be friends with. White Sox fans have gone through a lot mm. as well. Okay, <laughs> yeah. it's really yeah. tough. They make plenty of money. They've never signed a guy for a hundred million plus dollars. Some crazy stuff going on there. Lance Lynn, bad start to his season, comes on our show and people are going after him, even though he's been a really good, really underrated pitcher for a long time. And you're getting the screenshots of how he's doing for five starts. And he's like, <laughs> Yeah, and he's dropping f bombs and saying how much he he sucks right now. And, <laughs> and he said, and I'm editing myself a ton. You can you can see the interview, but I'm ditching the sweeper. He said it much more intent in intent. Um, and <laughs> full of French, French. Use French. <laughs> a lot. Of, it's really tough for me to not curse anymore, but I feel like I've done a decent job so far here. I'm but proud of you. He, You've been fantastic. Like, it's just sweeper. Thank you. Next start, like he, he was great. And but but after that interview, the White Sox fans, and it got picked up, you know, a lot in the Midwest. They're like, I can't even be mad at him. He came out and said, I stink right now. And he said how he would say it in the clubhouse. And he said a pitch that, he, that other people are trying to put on him and he wasn't really vibing with. And he's getting rid of that. Th- those kind of human element stories that also still relate directly to the game are insane. And yes. one other is like Rowdy Telez, because it's the same thing. Rowdy, I've, I've had Rowdy on as a guest on TV before. I've had Rowdy even as a guest host with me on MLB Network for a day. And, and I know who he is. He's one of the – he's easily top five funniest dudes that gives everyone crap in the game. He hmm. calls Bryce Harper Bruce. He calls <laughs> Mike Trout – what does he call him, Matt? Mark. Mark, Mark Trout. He's hilarious. <laughs> he's a 30 and 100 guy that nobody knows nationally. And we're like, yeah. this guy needs to come on and not obviously just – talk about how good he is on the field, but people should know the personality is. And just because he's in Milwaukee and the league doesn't highlight him, we need to highlight him because yeah. he's hilarious. And that will elevate our game and make us cooler in my yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Fellas. I love this. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure just to have this conversation with you. We love what you guys do. Uh, we're, we'll help uh, calm angel Twitter down, but we're not responsible <laughs> for everybody on angel Twitter, especially miserable Mark. So uh, <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for being here. What a, what a gift it's been to get to know you guys a bit. Yes. Absolutely. Pleasure coming on with you guys. And obviously the invite back at you. So we will line up. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see something else that bursts in the next few weeks that we need you guys to come on Foul Territory. And we'll talk it out and do our therapy session. So Love it. There we go. Welcome. And, and it'll happen within the month for sure. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Appreciate you, fellas. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys.
Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. What a great conversation with our friends at Foul Territory. Really enjoyed that conversation about the Angels. And just a reminder, the Angels play the Marlins at 7.07 tonight. You can catch that game on the Angels hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, we hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Get at us at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram and let us know how you feel about the conversation. Those guys weren't so bad. They, didn't, they, they weren't you know, so they bad. Had, they were a lot of fun. <laughs> they had a lot of fun. Really great things to say. Really great insights, of course. So we're happy to have that conversation with them. Hey, Mike, what's coming up on Monday when we return for more Locked On Angels? We're going to recap this weekend series against the Marlins. We're going to talk about what went well and what didn't go so well. Looking forward to that conversation. Hoping that we can finish May really strong. So come and join us on Monday on Locked On Angels. Can't wait to have you back here on Monday. We hope you have a great weekend. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you right back here on Monday.